Welcome everyone to our Give Sign Up, Run Sign Up Spring Seminar. Um, we're gonna get started very quickly, but just a couple of quick housekeeping notes to keep everything running smoothly throughout this. Um, all of our participants are muted, but we do wanna hear from you guys. If you have any questions throughout the session, please use the chat function in Zoom. It's usually found at the bottom of the screen. And we have Whitney and Elizabeth from our team here to help answer any questions throughout the sessions today. Uh, we are going to move quickly through a lot of material today, but all of the sessions are recorded and we will send out all of the recordings along with a set of follow-up resources for anyone who wants to dive in a little bit further. Bob and Allison, are you ready to get started? Ready. All right. <clears throat> I'm Bob. I'm Allison. And we're going to be your uh, your speakers, I guess, today for, uh, for this intro session. Um, so uh, what we're going to cover today is kind of a little introduction into give sign up, run sign up. Um, and then we're going to talk about the impact of COVID and what we're seeing like right now and what our expectations are for the rest of 21. And we have some data around all that too. We're a big data company, so uh, there's going to be graphs. Um, and then we're going to uh, really talk about how our technology stack uh, helps events and is helping a lot of events come back from um, from the pandemic, from the pandemic, <clears throat> and we'll also share some customer success stories. <clears throat> the rest of the day, um, we've got a nice full agenda. We talk about hybrid types of events uh, at one o'clock, marketing strategy at two o'clock, uh, event day sorts of things, and the expert panels at uh, at four o'clock Eastern. So uh, stick around, and hopefully you can uh, attend those. All right, so a little bit of background on us. So we started the company in 2010, and really it was focused on race registration. And uh, and we uh, just uh, kind of stumbled into it. It was a passion type of a project for me because I was into technology companies and into running. And, uh, and we started building stuff and people started using us and then they give us more ideas and we would just keep building technology. So fundamentally, we're a technology company. Um, <clears throat> uh, one early customer called us a bunch of uh, uh, former high school cross country runners that were computer programmers. <laughs> um, but what that has, has led to is this very robust set of technology that has now expanded to events, not just for endurance types of events, but for fundraising types of events as well. And so our platform has really grown and expanded. And um, <clears throat> what we feel really good about is that this technology that we're building has helped customers raise over $1.2 billion since we started. Um, and right now we, we help customers raise about a quarter billion dollars a year. And our ambition over the next several years is to grow that to a billion dollars per year. Um, so on an average year, we'll, we'll, we'll help customers sell 6 million tickets um, to their events. And so uh, we've kind of reached scale. Um, uh, we're, we're, we're very highly automated. We're actually a pretty small company in terms of employee count. But um, what we've done is we've really leveraged technology to make ourselves and our customers super efficient. One of the ways that we do that is that when we build technology, we open up that technology to everybody and we give it so that you can control it yourselves. So you don't have to come to us and say, oh, you know, switch a web page or, or uh, you know, change the pricing or anything like that. You can have total control over all of that yourselves, uh, which is one of the things that people love about it. And the other nice thing about this business strategy is that it helps us keep our costs low and we pass that along to our customers. So our prices wind up being super low, uh, then you know, lower than all the other ticket and reg platforms. And our donations are a simple flat 4%. And we process all the money ourselves. So we take care of all the credit card headaches. So you get you know, one statement that just shows the amount of revenue that you're getting. And we take care of all the credit card charges. We take care of processing chargebacks and things like that. And we've highly automated things like refunds and built that in to make it advantageous to do things like uh, referral rewards and have that all be automated for our customers. Um, we, we are, uh, and, and as we've, we like the traditional company has run sign up and over the past year or two, we've started to, to bridge into the nonprofit space specifically with our give sign up offerings. And we'll explain that as we go along. 
But <clears throat> what the what customers are always surprised at, especially in the nonprofit marketplace, is that we don't have any subscriptions. There, there's no fees to use our stuff. All of our services are free. If you have a free event, you, you don't owe us anything and you can use us in an unlimited type of, type of fashion. Um, and so there's no commitments. If you start using us, you can leave us at any point in time. So we don't have any funky three-year contracts or, or anything like that. So we're super easy to do business with. We have uh, nice people like Elizabeth and, and Whitney and others who, who help our customers and handhold them and make sure they get up to speed and don't hit bottlenecks or, or mistakes and things like that. Our only way of making money is that processing fee. And so our interests are very aligned with our customers. Um, so that's that's a little bit about us as a uh, as a background. Um, this is kind of a simplified version of our product set. So we kind of started over on the right hand side of this diagram. <clears throat> so around registration and race day type of technology that we built out. And we actually a number of years ago built out a membership system specifically for running clubs and things like that. Um, what happened with that is that um, a lot of nonprofits started to use us in the run, walk, ride space over the past 10 years. And so, uh, you know, probably for, uh, you know, probably since 2011 or so, we've actually taken donations. And since 2013, we've had a fundraising platform that we've continually improved. So we, we process millions and millions of dollars of donations and fundraising within that registration uh, platform that we have. And so a lot of our nonprofit customers, you know, we, they, and, you know, we, you know, our nonprofit customers can use all this stuff that, that we've had traditionally as, as, as well. And then what we've done over the past year or two is we've introduced this new purpose-built technology that's for nonprofits. So the big, the big one there over on the far left is ticket. Uh, event um, technology specifically for nonprofits. So think of it as Eventbrite, but built for nonprofits. So you can take donations, you can offer donation discounts, you can have a full uh, web page and, and website with your own URL for your ticket event. You don't have to rely to live inside of somebody else's ecosystem or, or something like that. And you get to take advantage of this uh, very robust platform that we built. This whole technology platform is, is one platform. It, we've got this one huge, massive replicated database, uh, highly secure and highly replicated and, and, um, and, and fault tolerant. Um, and we've built basically applications on top of that to drive specific purposes. Um, when we look at our platform as a whole, like what purpose are we building this for? And, you know, kind of to, to sum it up, I think the, the shortest thing that we've come up with is it's a supporter engagement platform. So if you're a nonprofit, um, we help you engage with your supporters and you have all sorts of different types of supporters. Um, they may be people who come and fundraise at your 5K or half marathon or something like that. They may be people who are coming to your gala or your golf outing or your pancake breakfast. They may be volunteers. We actually have a volunteer module in our, in our, uh, in our registration platform. They may be members of your, of your nonprofit um, um, uh, in some way, shape or form. So we're different than like the traditional uh, CRMs and donor management systems that have like a lot of features that help you target higher um, net worth individuals and, and things like that. We're really there to provide technology that lets you really engage and activate your supporters. So let's talk a little bit about uh, COVID impact. Um, the good news is that the graphs are heading in the right direction, and um, I, I think you know everybody's thankful. Allison and I both ha have the vaccine. Everybody's thankful for for the the amazing job that um, you know that that was done by the vaccine makers to to bring this technology out. Um, and you know, and the number of daily deaths is is following that, um, lagging it a little bit, of course, but it's following that trend as well. So things are definitely getting better. 
Um, you know, I think all of us are in a much better mood than we were in January, December and January. Um, so that has an implication for us. Um, the vaccine rollout has been, you know, phenomenal with over 200 million vaccine shots delivered in the US and, you know, over 40% of the population has at least one shot. And, um, and even the, the negative news of, you know, J&J &J creating some blood clots, you know, there's, there's lots of, uh, you know, concern about that and rightfully so. But taken in context, it's uh, it's pretty amazing how effective even the J and J vaccine uh, can be, and how little risk there is compared to other drugs that people take on a on a daily basis. Um, <clears throat> so here's some of the data that that we're seeing. So the graph on the left is showing that live events are returning. That blue section is a percentage of events that are live events that people are signing up for. <clears throat> the red is virtual events, and the yellow are challenge events. A challenge events is like I'm going to run across the state of Tennessee during the during the summer, and log my mileage every day and get trophy rewards and and things like that. Um, on the right hand side, you'll see uh, new events on the top, and this has been a pretty positive trend for a while. Um, just the number of new customers that are coming to our platform. Uh, is part of this and the number of, um, you know, just just existing customers that are creating new types of events. So, um, so these numbers are up markedly, they're typically up, you know, 50 plus percent on a weekly basis. Um, what's really interesting to to us is that renewed events are finally coming back. So a renewed event typically is someone that had a race in 2018 and they just click this green button that says renew my race and all of a sudden it's live for 2019. In 2020, about 35 to 40% of our customers hibernated. So renewal rates were down basically 35 or 40% all of last year. And what you've seen is that um, basically around the beginning of March timeframe, renewal started to happen again. And we're seeing um, an enormous number of customers starting to come back and plan their 2021 events. So they had an event in 2019, they're coming back and clicking the green button and they're setting that date for sometime in 2021. Um, what that means for us is that we're actually seeing uh, very positive trends in total transactions, basically money that you all raise on our platform. So uh, we are down almost 20% in January, and we've come back uh, pretty steadily and pretty strong. Um, we're actually just up a little bit month to date right now. We'll probably finish up a little bit more than that on a month to date uh, at the end of the month, because the trend... Like we could actually see the trend happening weekly. It's, it's getting better and better every week. And it's really coming from more and more events that are, that are, that are coming back, either renewals or new events. So, um, so what, we're, what we're seeing is that there's this, um, this combination that's causing this sense of urgency right now. So a lot of people had really tough pandemic eras. And it was, it was just a hard, hard year. And, and we were like, like, like the rest of you, there, there is a need for money, right? And, and, and so that's a need that many organizations have. Um, <clears throat> and what's happening now is that we're starting to see an early mover advantage, right? Everybody knows that the fall is going to be crowded with events. And the events that kind of take that weekend first are going to have an advantage over the events that plan later. Um, the other thing that we're kind of seeing, um, uh, a lot of our customers uh, are our timer partners and, um, and we're seeing a number of those uh, kind of almost grab market share. So there, there are some um, you know, customers that may not survive the pandemic, they may not be able to come back or they're in a weekend position. And so the stronger competitors, the more early movers are, are going back and kind of grabbing market share, whether it's an individual event or whether it's a, um, or, or whether it's a timer. Um, and pretty much a standard thing that we're seeing people do is set up what, what we're calling hybrid events. 
And a hybrid event is kind of traditional in person, but it also has some sort of virtual component to it. So um, when we look at this, um, you know, at, at this next section, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about our technology that we've delivered um, recently and kind of what's on the roadmap uh, in the in the near term future. Um, and when we talk about technology, for those of you who are, are new to us, um, we, we deliver technology constantly. So last year we delivered 2000 releases of our, of our platform. That meant that between clicks of you using give sign up, run sign up, the software is actually being upgraded multiple times per day. And knock on wood, we've not been down since 2015. So With the seven minutes of planned downtime. 2015, we had seven minutes of planned downtime, but we haven't even had to have planned downtime since then. And hopefully we'll, we'll stick to that. Um, so, uh, so we've got this wonderful technology platform. We put out new features and those new features are like available to you for free. It's kind of a cool thing. And it's the reason why we have a lot of new events that are joining us. Um, one of the coolest features that we've come out with over the past quarter or so is uh, photos. So we've had a photos platform, uh, a free photos platform for the past couple of years, and we've gone through a major rework of it. So like the user experience is nicer. Um, we've added uh, for endurance events where there's bibs, we've upgraded the bib tagging technology that we use in there. Um, you, you can see in this uh, picture over here, uh, these people are wearing bibs and these green numbers are the bibs that are being read. And, you know, the guy over here way on the right, whose bib is out of focus, it actually recognized his bib number. This guy here, uh, his bib is kind of crinkled, so it didn't quite recognize that one automatically, but it's kind of amazing. The other nice thing that we've done is we've taken this technology that was, you know, purpose built for uh, the endurance community, and we moved it over to our, our nonprofit ticket platform. So in addition to all the other features that you get for donations and things like that, if you're holding a, a gala, you could have somebody actually take pictures during the gala, post those up to your ticket uh, website that you're hosting on uh, Give Sign Up, and it's there for you know uh, something that draws people in. So um, so uh, just a, an amazing set of technology. You know we host millions and millions of photos, and and people are putting stuff up. This is a really cool part of doing a hybrid event because photos let you um, upload photos from your actual live event and do the bib tagging, but you're also able to empower participants that are competing virtually to upload their own photos. And so you get this really shared experience of one event, even if people are participating in different ways. Yeah, we built a truckload of virtual technology last year for customers, and that's kind of why we became the, the virtual kings, if you will. And um, so uh, a lot of people come to us because we just have this rich technology platform, including free photos that uh, virtual participants can upload. Um, we, we also are getting ready for you know, events to come back. So we have a uh, completely updated check-in app. Um, it's got a ton of nice new features based upon a lot of user feedback that we've, that we've gotten. Um, in 2019, this app was used to check in 1.6 million people, um, and we're hoping that um, you know, live with live events coming back, it checks in even more this year. Um, we also uh, recently um, did a integration with USA uh, Cycling, um, and it's around their waiver requirements and stuff. So now we're uh, basically hosting their waiver and keeping track of their waiver so that um, event directors that are uh, have cycling events that want things like USA cycling uh, insurance and uh, sanctioning uh, can utilize this not for competitive events. Uh, Bike Reg still has an exclusive contract with, um, with USA cycling. Um, but for non-competitive events like, you know, uh, gravel, we're, we're really big in gravel um, and those sorts of things. Um, uh, uh, this is a very nice addition. Another thing that 
you know, you, you kind of don't really think about a lot of our customers use us and, you know, they love the email, the free email marketing or the photo platform or the website uh, platform and stuff like that. But fundamentally, we're a financial company. Um, we're kind of like a branch bank and we move, you know, a quarter billion dollars a year of, of money between uh, participants and, and uh, event directors. And uh, so we have to pay attention to that. And so the past uh, six months or so, we've been um, basically rebuilding our financial infrastructure um, so that it takes us, you know, above a billion dollars. Um, one thing that we're in process of right now, and probably about 40% of our customers have been moved over to Adyen. For most people, that should be a transparent um, type of, of move. And it's just like the people who are processing the money underneath the covers. Um, along with that, all of the infrastructure has been majorly upgraded and it will allow us to be efficient as we, um, as we grow into the future. Um, we've also updated a bunch of things and this will continue for the next quarter or two. You'll see lots of new features uh, when you're touching things in the financial system. So uh, when you're onboarding, if it's a new customer, um, there's this set of, uh, of pages that you go through that we have to collect information uh, to comply with financial requirements and Visa and MasterCard rules and all that. Um, so all of that stuff is getting updated. There's going to be some beautiful new reporting done um, and, uh, and just lots more, uh, more goodies uh, as, the, as the year rolls forward. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Is this where we're switching over? Sure. We'll okay. Give people a break from this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully. Um, so one of the things that we're going to be rolling out in the next few days is an updated onboarding process. So when you are creating another event on our platform and you have a payment account that you've already used previously on the platform, that's going to be really front and center and easy for you to identify. So it's just going to make it easier for new customers coming on board as well as existing customers as they set up new events. Um, and then the screenshot on the right hand side is a new version of payment reporting that's going to be showing in all of your event dashboards. So we're going to be adding more real time analytics and graphs, the types of things that you see on your race insights and give insights dashboards when you log into your different events. We're going to be bringing those over to payments so you get more real time information, as well as all the same reports that you've always used for your own um, financial reporting and reconciliation. Some financial features have already come out. Um, one of these big features is around fiscal sponsors. Fiscal sponsors work to manage the finances and incorporation of many smaller nonprofit and foundations. Um, and one of the things that they need is custom uh, fields to report and reconcile the financial reporting that's coming from our system. And this is also extremely useful for any large events organizations or large nonprofits. It lets you add two custom fields to every entity that you have set up on our platform, every race, donation website, ticket event. And what it does is it makes it easier for your finance team, your CFO, to um, have your custom codes, custom you know, notes in every single financial export out of our system just reduces the amount of VLOOKUPs and merging that you need to do and just automates all of that. Um, the other feature is vouchers. We have a ton of new customers coming over to our platform and a lot had, um, you know, wacky situations from last year where they offered deferrals or discounts. Our voucher system just allows our um, new customers very flexible ways to apply those deferrals and discounts um, in 2021 and forward. Donation websites, um, uh, nonprofits are increasingly starting to use Give Sign Up to accept donations year round that aren't attached to a ticket event or a run walk ride. And so we keep releasing features to add more functionality than your standard PayPal donation button. One of these features is donation e-cards. So your nonprofit can actually upload custom card images or choose from one of our default designs and empower your donors to send um, e-cards to their family. So if I want to make a donation for 
um, Bob's birthday. He is my father, by the way, so that may be something I want to do. Um, <laughs> I could send him an e-card and schedule it to send on his actual birthday, and he would get this nice email message that's customized and shows your nonprofit's branding. Um, it's just a nice feature to offer um, for free. Um, just continuing to add more reporting functionality and analytics and more options for your nonprofit to really customize um, your year round donations. Um, we've also introduced a lot of new features for fundraising campaigns. Um, what we're going to be, you're going to be getting an email about this early next week is we're actually giving um, nonprofits three flexible ways to display their peer to peer and DIY fundraising campaigns with really simple, easy to create pages, um, a fundraising website upgrade, and the ability to host um, multiple DIY fundraising campaigns on a single website. So really giving our nonprofit customers flexible ways to do fundraising campaigns that again, are not attached to a specific event for free. And we have also brought over all of the favorite features from run sign up fundraising um, into give sign up fundraising. So that slideshow image for your campaign page and your fundraisers, as well as, of course, the free Facebook fundraiser integration um, really empowers nonprofits to raise more with a free platform for their fundraising campaigns. Um, as we continue to get more and more nonprofits doing more than just their charity 5k on our platform, they're doing their ticket events and their donation campaigns. Um, there's an increasing need to integrate with nonprofit CRM and donor management um, systems, and we're getting an influx of requests for that. And we actually have a third party um, partner called Reg Forward that has come up with a really good, efficient, cost efficient, um, easy way to make this happen. And this list that you're seeing on the screen is a list of integrations that um, our customers are currently using or are in the process of testing and will be going live in the next like week or two. If you don't see your CRM or DMS on this list, that's fine. What you can do is you can reach out to our team or you can go to regforward.com and submit a request um, to see what we can do for, um, for your organization. And one of the pieces that we're involved in, while we aren't actually building custom integrations, that's what Reg Forward is doing, we're continuing to open up our platform and add to that open API that has always been a fundamental part of our platform, but just opening up more and more data fields as customers request so that we can make sure that all of the data is getting automated into the other tools um, that your nonprofit uses to raise money. This is going to be you. This is mine? Yeah. All right. Technology <laughs> roadmap. Um, so this is some of the exciting stuff we have coming during the rest of the year. Um, one of the super strategic projects that um, that you, you won't see for a little while yet is is our supporter engagement uh, platform. It's, it's basically, you remember how I said we have one database? So whether it's a volunteer or you know a ticket holder or a fundraiser or somebody that signed up for a 5K, all that is going into a single database. And, um, <clears throat> and while your overall management may be in your own CRM and things like that, you'll want to have different types of engagement activities for all of your supporters. And it's just easy to have that there together. So what we've done is we've, um, made it really, um, really what we're in the process of doing is making it really easy to interact with all of your supporters. So we're doing this kind of automatic merging of uh, different names that might be Robert Bickle and Bob Bickle, and, and we'll do that merging automatically with some really cool technology that we've built um that gives you the single supporter view so you're not managing all sorts of bob bickles <laughs> one is enough um and uh, and then we're going to be building this next generation email marketing tool that's going to be tightly integrated with um with this supporter engagement so it'll make it really easy to take automated actions um based upon uh, on, on future things. So people use our email marketing currently. Uh, we, I think we spend 25 million plus emails a month on behalf of customers, but this is gonna kind of be, think of it as like the next generation version of that. 
Um, race day scoring, um, this is the tool that timers use to uh, figure out who finishes first and second and third and who finishes fourth in their age group and, and so forth. Um, so uh, we have a product called the Race Director um, that has been a leader for the past 30 years. Race day scoring is the next generation of that. <laughs> and uh, um, we're putting a lot of investment in this. We've got a we've got a great team down in Orlando that's um, that's putting this together. We've had eight releases so far this year, <clears throat> and if you watch the scoring platform market, there's not there's nobody that's putting the type of investment in here that that we are for for timers. We're really excited. I think Matt Avery told me that today we're actually coming out with a beta that's going to contain the first uh, three bullet points here. So cross-country support, um, team and scoring, so complex types of rules for team um, uh, results, and then automated actions. Um, so one of the big things in cross-country is that uh, kids will come up and to the meet and some kids will run JV and some kids will run varsity. And the coaches never tell the timer which one is which. So we'll do automatic switching of, of team members based upon what their, uh, what their times are, like whether they started at the 10 o'clock or whether they started at the 11 o'clock event. Um, <clears throat> and we're coming up with lots of different automated actions that's going to make it super efficient to be a, a timer with this software. Later this year, we'll come out with other uh, with other features for lap races, some series scoring stuff. Um, <clears throat> you're already going to see some of the improved reporting with the team stuff that we're introducing. Um, and then we're already doing a little bit of automated backup to the cloud, but that's going to uh, be uh, be great. And what what that's going to allow is that a central timer with maybe five timing teams is going to be able to sit at a central place and from the cloud, keep track of everything. Um, so uh, the race day suite, this is kind of the big area of investment that we're putting into, um, you know, in addition to the photos that we just did and the, and the race day scoring that we just talked about. <laughs> uh, race Joy app uh, became highly popular uh, last year uh, with virtual. And it looks like this year it's going to be really, really popular with uh, live races. Um, and it's going to be getting a UI refresh during the, during the middle of the year. Um, I was just uh, reviewing some stuff yesterday with the UX team, and um, it, it's it's going to look great. <laughs> it's going to be really fun, and we're going to integrate your the the give sign up run sign up profile with the app, so it'll make uh, finding people easier. It'll make uh, allow you to stay kind of logged into the system overall um, much easier, and and so forth. <clears throat> um, like I said, we came out with the new version of the race day check in app. Um, there are going to be there is going to be a new version coming later on this year of the ticket check-in app, and then we're going to introduce for the first time a volunteer check-in app that works with our volunteer system. Um, and then the timer dashboard uh, is really going to get a lot of improvements during the course of this year. I talked about the automatic backup of of uh, coming from race day scoring. It's going to be both like all the all the times that are coming up as well as the configuration back up um, into, into the dashboard. You know, one thing that's not on here that I thought I would mention is the project that Cohart is working on, um, because I know a lot of customers have asked for this over the years, but we are going to be releasing the ability to have multiple waivers for registration. That's true. That's Which true. Kind of a big deal. Actually, Cohart did, uh, Jeff Cohart is one of our developers. He's a great, great guy, very funny. <laughs> Allison, I think he's the funniest guy in the company, but, um, but uh, he, he did the USA cycling waiver stuff. So he's kind of bringing some of that stuff over and making it generic. So I'm going to talk about some give sign up um, plans that we have for the next, let's say six months. <laughs> <laughs> She's hoping. I'm hoping. Um, may, it's software, so yeah. it might be nine months. So the focus of Give Sign Up's team is to help nonprofits raise more and engage supporters. And I like to put it into four main buckets. Um, so one is free data-driven websites. This is a really powerful tool um, because one of the things that nonprofits don't have the time to do is make manual updates to their website every time something changes. 
I, one of the awesome things about our free websites is that they're data driven. So if you have a pricing increase coming up, if you, you know, you have a live donation goal thermometer, you have um, top fundraiser lists, all of that is going to run automatically so that you don't have to waste time making updates to that. And it also saves you money because these are free. <laughs> so, um, and with you know domains and subdomains, they become really powerful. And it's one of the big areas where we're gonna be focusing a lot of development time to make better. Um, the other is purpose-built event fundraising tools to raise more. Um, so we talk a lot about some new features we have with tickets and fundraising coming out the rest of the year. Um, the free supporter engagement platform piece that Bob talked about um, a few minutes back with next generation email and the ability to create targeted lists um, across all of your supporters that are doing all sorts of uh, activities on the platform. And then the final one that we talked about also previously is financials um, being integrated into all the pieces of, of this. Um, so one of the things that you guys will hopefully start seeing the beginnings of um, in the next weeks, months, is um, a, probably about a month and a half. Yeah, um, a new website builder. So with um, ticket events and donation websites and fundraising campaigns, um, we're going to make it um, kind of a next generation version of what you have in the registration platform to organize and manage your content, um, create different menu items, and really make it even easier and more powerful to create these free websites. Um, it's a project that's probably never going to end. There's always gonna be more and more things we can do. And that's one of the really exciting things about um, working with nonprofit customers because um, you know Elizabeth and Amanda and Chris, all the Give Sign Up team, they're listening and coming back with ideas of what we can do next to make websites even better. Um, one of the things that we're expecting is for events to come back in 2021. We're seeing that trend already in um, races coming back. And we expect that um, based on conversations with nonprofits, people seem really optimistic about summer and fall events. And so we're really focusing on building out our ticket platform to be even better. Um, so yesterday, um, if you are a follower of the Give Sign Up blog, which you should be, um, we released um, ticket imports so you can manually add offline entries to um, your ticket events. Um, one of the really exciting things that we have heard the need for from so many of our customers is an auction solution. Um, there's auction solutions out there. They tend to be very expensive. They tend to be separate from the ticketing platform, which creates inefficiencies and just slows people down. Um, and so one of our big focuses over the next six months is going to be building a lightweight online auction platform um, that's free for nonprofits to use and really lets you host an auction um, that can be in-person, virtual, or hybrid um, to really engage and, um, yeah, raise more money. Yeah. Um, we're going to continue to make updates and improvements to fundraising websites and donations. Um, we have a lot of fun features that are in registration for fundraising, and we're going to be bringing them over over the next couple of months. Um, one of my favorite features are milestones and badges. We added some really cool new ones for virtual challenge fundraising campaigns, and we want to bring that over to your standalone DIY peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, Two of the big financial projects that we want to be able to do with um, all this work we're putting into the, our integrated payments is one, to better feature charity partners. So to give um, nonprofits more visibility um, to be selected as a charity partner for endurance events that are happening on our platform. And then the second is DIY fundraising and really empower your nonprofit to control what your supporters can do, such as host a ticket event, um, and how those funds are going to flow. So for an example, one nonprofit may want to allow supporters to create ticket events like golf tournaments or galas for their nonprofit and have the ticket fees go to the host and have all the donations go to the nonprofit. And other nonprofit may want all of the ticket fees plus donations to go to their nonprofit and they reimburse the host afterwards. So we're going to be um, able to do some really, really cool, powerful and flexible DIY fundraising options for nonprofits. 
Um, we also have plans to um, create a texting service, um, which can be useful for donation campaigns. Like if you want to raise $75,000 in the next 15 minutes, text this number and make a donation. Um, and we're gonna continue to listen to um, requests for integrations to CRMs and donor management systems and open up any data on our platform that nonprofits need to get into their tool stack. That, that just a note, the tech service is really cool. It's gonna be uh, built on a, on a, in a generic way that will be used across our entire platform. So if you're holding a race, you'll be able to have like a sign up to say, say text XYZ um, and um, to see results or something like that, um, or text, uh, text, text ABC to make a donation. <clears throat> text uh, ZYX for <laughs> uh, to participate in the auction. Yeah, so lots of options there. Yeah, and it's going to be free. <laughs> um, so I thought we would just wrap up with a couple of short customer stories. Maybe we can have time for some questions. Um, so. Wheeler Mission has already opened registration for the Drumstick Dash, and they're doing it as a hybrid event. Um, I think you're leaving money on the table if you aren't offering a virtual option. It broadens the participation, um, just like reach that your event can get. And it also gives you like a built-in contingency plan in case things don't go well and you need to switch people to virtual at the last minute. Um, Wheeler Mission has integrated donations and optional fundraising as part of their hybrid event. Um, and I also am really happy to see Wheeler Mission starting to set up a DIY fundraising hub on Give Sign Up as a standalone, um, separate from their events. What do you mean DIY fundraising? So people can go to their website and they can create a fundraiser for their birthday or for you know some special occasion or they're running a marathon, hiking a mountain. Um, the reason that this is beneficial to nonprofits is our platform um, gives you that data on your key supporter, which is the fundraiser, while also empowering them to create an integrated um, fundraiser on Facebook so they can really leverage that social network. You get those donations at cost. We don't charge for anything that's processed on Facebook, but it all rolls up into your reporting on Give Sign Up. Um, the Pat Tillman Foundation has uh, the Pats run every year, and they went completely virtual this year. One of the cool things I noticed about them is they're actually extending the engagement with their supporters by um, offering bundles with virtual challenges. So in addition to that one time like virtual 5k or 10k that you're running, they're also incorporating challenges that are before or after that event that kind of extend the engagement, extend um, participation of longer. Um, which is cool. It gives participants something to do um, and have fun with. It's an extra challenge for them to take on. And the key thing from this is that virtual is still a good option, especially if you're a nonprofit. Um, I liked this screenshot because they've already exceeded their donation goal from donations and fundraising of $150,000. So even if you believe that people have virtual fatigue, if you have a mission, um, people are still going to want to support you. Um, so Amway Riverbank Run is a large race that uses our platform, and I just think that they're a great example of proactive communication. Um, so it, it reflects the optimism for fall events being able to happen. Um, so they've actually pushed their event out from May to October. Um, so just a reminder that those calendars are getting busy. And they are using um, a new pop-up message feature that we came out with last year when the pandemic started hitting so you could communicate really important information. And some of the key things here are that they, um, they have a press release. So they actually did like a formal press release and linked that on this pop-up message. And they also provide a ton of flexible participant options. Um, so just a really, really great example of communicating to your participants and letting them know about what's going on and just being very proactive across all channels to do that. And then um, Epilepsy Foundation of Colorado, um, I've seen them do probably a dozen plus um, virtual events um, over the last nine months or so. And I've seen them increasingly start doing um, outdoor and socially distanced ticket events. So this screenshot is for a golf tournament that they have coming up. 
Um, and we're starting to notice that a lot more. It's not just virtual ticket events anymore. Um, we still see a lot of those going on and being very successful, you know, a virtual charcuterie night. Um, just people have been really creative with ideas, but we're seeing an increasingly large number of golf tournaments and other types of outdoor um, events that are being set up by nonprofits. Um, so that's kind of the end of our presentation. Um, just wrote a few key takeaways from those customer success stories on this slide and a reminder that um, we're here as your partners and we're gonna continue to create and release um, really great and free technology to help you guys, whether you're putting on a hybrid or virtual or in-person fundraising event. Great. Um, do we have any questions before we uh, take a break um, before the one o'clock session? Um, um, we've been answering a lot of them throughout, but really quickly, I think one, we've gotten a couple of different questions on how the pricing works, how exactly you use it for free, um, and what the, the transaction fees are for the products. Yeah. So if it's a free event, there, there is no cost. Um, if it's a free event and you take donations, uh, we charge 4% processing fee, and that includes the credit card fee. So it's above what you see like from Stripe of 2.9% and that pays for people like Allison and Johanna and Elizabeth and Whitney and me. Um, I, so, uh, and then if you are selling tickets or you're registering uh, people, then what we do is it's a transaction fee. So we'll charge a dollar plus 5.8%. Um, so it's pretty simple. Yeah, and there's flexible options with how those fees can work. So you can choose to always pass the fees on to your supporters and your participants. And that actually allows you to use our platform completely for free. Um, one of the things that I see a lot of nonprofits preferring to do is that they choose to absorb the fee, but give participants and donors the option to pay it. Um, it's just a little setting that's customizable. It's pre-checked and most, um, people signing up, I think it's around like 90% will choose to opt in and cover that fee. So it really keeps the cost quite low. Um, can you compare this program to Classy or some of the other platforms that are out there? Yeah, yes. so um, so I'll, I'll do kind of the registration ticket side. So, um, so, you know, our heritage is run, walk, ride, and our heritage is kind of um, deep knowledge about how events are operated <laughs> and what it takes to uh, operate those. And so, um, you know, uh, you know, I think that kind of there's a major amount of feature difference between us and Classy on the on the on the event side. Obviously, you know, we're free and lower cost than them and stuff. Do uh, you want to take the rest of it? I mean, that's primarily what I was going to say. I mean, we build free and purpose-built technology. We don't have any subscription fees. Um, and the way that this transaction pricing works, it means that we're completely aligned with your organization um, because we only make money when you make money. Um, yeah, I think I think where Classy has made a lot of of their uh, market share is is um, kind of on the donation and fundraising side. Um, I feel like we're at least comparable, if not a little bit ahead now, in both of those areas from a technology basis. I feel like within another, you know, I don't know, three to six months, we'll be quite ahead of them on the fundraising side of things. Um, and the fact that we have a free platform. So we are we we actually are getting a number of customers coming over from Classy. They just did a a big financing round and 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 they made it pretty clear that they're kind of going upscale. So that financing and their target is to go after more corporate type donors, high more donors. high wealth donors, and things like that. So we we kind of. Um, see our platform being kind of the, the, the general purpose platform. So the um, you engage your supporters. Yeah, that, that, that engages supporters more directly. Um, so we see a lot of people, obviously uh, nonprofits get a lot of money from their higher end um, donors and things like that. And so you, that's why you need a donation management system. That's why you need the high end classy subscription software. 
but to really engage your supporters, um, that's really our target market that we've that we've kind of carved out. Yeah, the only other thing I would say is that um, our platform is really complementary to any other tool that your nonprofit has already invested in. Um, like you can use our platform for free. So people oftentimes will come to run sign up, give sign up and use us for a 5K or a gala event because we have purpose-built event fundraising technology. And we have all these other tools that are also free and available to use. But if you're already stuck with a contract on another platform, you know, you can mix and match. Yeah, definitely mix and match. We're not like, we're not super, we don't get super hung up on, oh, well, I'm using Classy for all my fundraising. That's fine. If you use us for your, for your golf outing, use us for your golf outing if we can help you out there. All right. I think that is our time on the first session. Um, if you guys want to hang out here, um, you can you know, step away from your computer for a minute, but we will be back again in 10 minutes at one o'clock to go over hybrid events. Um, I am going to put up a poll for you guys. We're going to do these during the breaks just to try to get a little bit more of an idea of what kinds of things you guys want to learn about um, and how we can help you out. Um, so if anyone can answer those during the break, we'd appreciate it. See you in 10 minutes.